Well, look what I've got here. It's the new um, Stylophone Generate by Dubrec. And for anyone that doesn't know, the original Stylophone was basically a little 1970s children's toy, but the heart of it was an analog oscillator that was uh, famously used by David Bowie on Space Oddity. Um, only one note, apparently, but, but it was there. And he used to use a stylus to play it, hence this sort of weird-looking keyboard, which echoes back to the original. You don't need a stylus on this one. Um, but it does actually, <laughs> that sound sounds similar to the uh, the original, which was just a, just a sawtooth. So that's what kids in the 70s used to do. And that's pretty much all the sounds anyone ever used to get off the original. But this is a true synthesizer. It's a boutique synth. There's a limited run of 500. And I have a certificate here to prove that. This is numbered 46 of 500. It also comes with three patch cables because you might have noticed it's got, I think it's 19 patch points at the top. Plus a couple of these 3.5 millimeter to five pin in MIDI converter cables. Because it is MIDI. And a manual that I wish I'd read <laughs> fully before I started playing this. I'll explain why in a minute. So at 500 units, it definitely falls within the definition of a boutique synth. Um, it's not to be confused with the Roland boutiques, which are not really a boutique in any way. But I thought I'd give this a quick run through before attempting um, a comparison. But what quite to compare it to um, is a bit of a puzzle at the minute, because this is it's probably the most unique synth I've ever had in the studio. And it's a nice weighty little thing that's, you know, the solid bit of kit. All oh, this is metal. And even the keyboard's metal. So I've been playing this for a couple of days, and as I say, it's probably the most unique synth I've ever had in here. It's growly, it's dirty, it's noisy with all sorts of sort of beautiful artifacts that you just don't get from anything else. Uh, try getting a plug-in or any other synth for that matter to sound like this, uh, and it's not going to happen. Just a quick overview then before we get into it. It's got two VCOs with a ring mod and sync. Uh, it's got an LFO with flexible destination. It's got this really unique filter, which is where a lot of the character comes from. It's got a single ADSR generator, and it's got this, what's called an analog style digital delay, um, and a distortion circuit plus a sequencer. Moving over to the filter now, and like every other part of this synth, it's got a real, real character to it. It's got four modes, and every one's a gritty, screaming maniac. I think I described it to someone as sort of irresistibly insane. It's sort of mental, but you can't help being strangely attracted to it. It's got a high pass, a low pass. When they're both pressed in, it's band pass. And when they're both out, it's a notch. So let's uh, let's just go through those quickly. So going for the low pass first, using the sawtooth. Yeah, it sounds like a low pass. 12 dB, apparently. Oh, listen to that. <laughs> Watch your ears. Crackles and fizzes. It's great. It's great. And look at the frequency analysis there. <laughs> How many additional uh, uh, resonant peaks you get from that? That's n that's absolutely insane. So up in this sort of top third of movement, there's all sorts of gorgeousness you can, you can be had from that. Ah, I love it. Moving on to the high pass then. Let's play something a bit lower. Lovely. Let's 
Let's add some resonance. <laughs> Try getting that out of a plugin. And now this is the notch. Sounds like a notch. Let's put a bit more harmonics in there. Again, very nice. Let's try the uh, bit, of, bit of resonance on there as well. Ooh, scary. Um, normally when you put the resonance up on a notch, it just it takes the notch out, so it just takes the notch and the resonance just makes it flat again, but this doesn't. This takes it in all sorts of strange places. So, sort of a bit lost for words on that, really, because it's just so unique, isn't it? I know I'm taking it to extremes here, but... And bam pass. Stop bringing the resonance in. Nice again. So it's an analog filter, it's digitally controlled, which is where you get some of that sort of artifact to think from, um, especially in the low end. It's not as smooth as some, but you know, I'm in no way is that a complaint. And the sounds I'm getting from it and the way I'm sort of starting to play with it does remind me of my, uh, my fuse box, which is again, it's a 12 dB, it's got band pass, high pass notch. But it's 1300 pound. So hopefully that gives a sort of good overview of how that filter sounds, because I, I really like it. It's got really got a character of its own, that. And that resonance is absolutely insane. Envelope. It's got, it's got an envelope. This is, a, I suppose this is a bit that isn't sort of really unique. Let's add a bit of envelope to the filter. I'm just going to whack the resonance up for a second and just see what it sounds like. Okay. 
Okay, let's do a quicker one. So it's snappy, isn't it? I'm not getting down to a click. <laughs> I was getting some real gristly sounds out of this last night. But yeah, it's got a single envelope, say this are, got a gate in, and you've got an envelope out as well. And as with everything on this, it's got a, re a un really unique pair of VCOs. So as I was saying, I wish I'd read the manual <laughs> when I first got this um, because I thought it was out of tune and I couldn't, couldn't work out why not. And it actually states twice in the manual, press the ring mod and oscillate sync together to calibrate it. And it'll start making some funny noises. All the VCOs that have got like the Korg monologue and the IK Multimedia Uno do something similar automatically when you turn them on. So worthwhile doing that every time you turn it on, once it's, once it's warmed up. So as with everything on this synth, the oscillators um, are really unique. The two VCOs are identical. They've got a selection of waveforms based on a saw and a square with different sub-oscillators. Plus it's got um, oscillator detune for oscillator 2. Let's turn them on. So it'll detune by plus or minus an octave. And then we've got an octave select switch up here. It's a knob, not a switch, I suppose. Master tune. And as I say, it's got ring mod and oscillator sync as well. When they're at 12 o'clock, the oscillators are off. So let's take a look at the waveforms. Let's start with the sawtooth first. Sounds like a sawtooth, looks quite like a sawtooth. And then we move over to the next, um, the next wave, which is a sawtooth plus a sub. But the volume of the sort of main octave seems to have, have dropped. It is in there, but the, but the sub's much louder, isn't it? So it's not like having a sawtooth and then just adding the sub to it. It does something slightly different than that. Then this is two octaves lower. Looking at that frequency analysis, it's sort of a bit bonkers, isn't it? And the, <laughs> and the wave shape's nuts as well. Sort of reminds me a little bit of the Juno 2, actually. And this is all three together. So the... Main octave, sub octave, and sub sub octave. And then off again. And as I say, this is identical. So VCO2. So when you've got three playing and three playing, you've got six oscillators playing. So you can see straight away that this is going to have some sort of really unique sounds and some quite blisteringly powerful ones as well. So let's move over to the pulse side of things, shall we? We've got a pulse. Which isn't a square, it's a thin pulse, isn't it? It was about 25%. About and we move to the thin pulse with um, an octave below as well. So again, the, the lower octave, the sub octave is a little bit louder than the, than the root. But again, look at those harmonics. It just sort of adds some weird, nice sort of rich tones, aren't they? And then um, the sub sub octave, which is two below. But on this side, so on the pulses, you don't get uh, the sub sub plus the sub and the main. 
just three options but you do get pwm it's a pwm in here so let's just try that stick the lfo out into the pwm in and these are quite sort of as you knew they're quite stiff when you push them in but it's a bit concerned it was going to break it but it's fine Nice, I'll go through the LFO in a minute. So getting some really nice beefy sounds instantly. Then next up we've got a ring mod. So unlike the MS-20 where the ring mod's an option on one of the VCOs, it's additional to the VCO, like it is on the Odyssey, I suppose. Well, it's either on or off. Um, and the oscillators can be off when you still get ring mod. And you can have the oscillators on and the ring mod. Sort of like a metallic -y tone to that, isn't there? And then we have oscillator sync as well. So let's put maybe on to sawtooths. So let's modulate the pitch of oscillator two with the envelope. Envelope out. So oscillator two CV in. <laughs> Can you hear all those little fizzles and crackles in there? <laughs> so just love all the character that you get from this. So moving on to the LFO now, again with every section of this you come across something that's a sort of unique feature. It's got eight waveforms and I love this waveform, it's a stepped ramp. So I'll just put it, stepped ramp, Let's put it onto the filter. <laughs> Crazy, I love it. Yeah, it's got sample and hold as well. Thimples. Square. So yeah, all the usual suspects, except for um, the pulse uh, and this. So you've got three destinations, oscillator one, oscillator two, and the filter. Oscillator one. Exactly the same for oscillator two. Speed and depth. And if you're using the LFO as a modulation source, you can change the depth here as well. So if it was... And that can increase the modulation um, again. This is your sort of modulation wheel, I suppose. And this is your glide, so. And you can change from a constant speed to a constant time. We've also got a one-shot mode, which is great because you can use it as a separate envelope. So let's put one-shot mode on, on a ramp, put it to oscillator two. Let's have a listen to oscillator two. And put oscillator sync on. It's doing what you'd expect. Let's turn the depth up. <laughs> Crazy. Let's try that with the um, the stepped ramp. Uh, 
Nice. It's got patch points here as well, so you can um, have the speed coming from the sequencer. So the gate out of the sequencer can adjust the speed of the LFO. So you could do something pretty crazy with that. And looking at the other CV connections, you've got two LFO outs, one reset speed and a depth. And I quite like taking the LFO out and putting it in the resonance. That's cool. So following the envelope, we've got a digital delay, um, but it's a, an analog style digital delay, and it says it's based on the popular Princeton PT2399 delay uh, chip, um, whatever that means. <laughs> but, but it's lo-fi, and it adds a lot of noise and dirt. I'll show you that now. So the, as you increase the time, you increase the sort of the, the, the noise in the system. That's a little bit like a bucket brigade delay, isn't it? So if you've seen my Eventide Roads versus Mogafog delay comparison, you'll sort of see what I mean. And if you've not seen that, go and look at it. It's quite good. So let's get just a sort of normal sound, shall we? Let's add some delay. So... It's got really nice snappy bits with sort of almost sort of phasery chorus-ish. Without. With. And now let's do a snappy sound and listen to the delay again. So you can hear how really low-fi it gets when you turn the time up. Next up, we've got the mixer, and you'll see it's got volume and it's got delay level. Delay level sort of stands to reason. And the volume is the volume of VCO1 plus VCO2 plus the ring mod. So you don't get individual mixes for each of the levels of the, of the VCO. So VCO1 is either on or off, VCO2 is on or off, and the ring mod's on or off. So... You can't adjust between them. As I said, every, every section's unique. So moving from there to this drive circuit, and I'll read from the manual what it says here. It says it's a, it's a diode clipping overdrive circuit with an added JET transistor boost stage, but it means it doesn't lose, um, doesn't lose bass as you turn it up. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? I don't think Wendy Carlos could have done switched on back on this. It's not it's not the most subtle of synths, but it's yeah, it's got some some character and attitude. So finally it's got the sequencer, you've got eight patterns, sixteen notes per pattern. You press record, type in using rests and ties. These buttons at the bottom have dual functions. So simply just type in what you want and then press play.
and you can transpose as well so So there you have it. Uh, in conclusion, this is a, uh, it's, well, I'll I'll hopefully I've demoed how absolutely unique sounding it is. Uh, and it prefers to take you to the sort of dirtier sides of synthesis. I've never played something like the sort of vintage Russian Polyvox, but I could imagine it's similarly sort of insane and gritty, like in a really good way. It's probably not gonna be your one and only synth. Well, if we rely on soft synth, this might be a, a real eye opener and a great way of adding some life and vibrancy to your tracks. If you have other sound sources, this could really refresh things just because it's so, uh, I don't know, it's sort of, sort of alive sounding. And you definitely get the impression that there are sort of voltages running through circuits rather than algorithms calculating what you should be hearing. So if you want smooth classic sounds, this probably isn't for you. But if you're looking for a, a sort of kinky Rottweiler, this could be the one. I'm going to take a look at just how unique it is in another video. Um, not sure how I'm going to do that though, because um, really what you put it up against... But what I'll probably do is show how it acts differently to most synths, I suppose. And how it can be a sort of great source of inspiration. I'll add some demo sounds to the end of this video, but hopefully uh, that was of some use to somebody somewhere. I really enjoy playing with this. Thank <laughs> you.